Hello my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the scariest things that have happened to me as a prison wife. So if you're interested in all of the whoo, heart pounding situations that I've been in because I'm a prison wife, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code, and I've been coaching prison wives and family members since 2009. Thousands of men and women have told me that they would not have been able to get through this journey without me, which is always so humbling. But I need to remind you that we do not glorify or glamorize prison life or prison wife life here. Frankly, the whole entire thing just sucks. But I will help you, if you're stuck here, make the best out of this really painful and hopefully one-shot deal. So if you like my content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Before you leave, subscribe and ding that bell so you never miss a future video when I post them every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on the days in between. Okay, before we get started, I just wanna let you know this is not going to be a video about my top scariest experiences as a prison wife as far as if I haven't heard from Adam or crazy scary things that have happened inside of prison or crazy situations that have happened that I see while I'm in the visiting room. That'll be for another story. It's more about really scary situations that have happened to me on the road and staying at the hotel. And I wanna share tips with you about traveling solo or traveling with your children. So these are gonna go in order from least scary to most scary. So the first one really isn't very scary at all. It's just kind of a caution type of a thing. Back when I first started visiting Adam at McKean, it's a six hour drive. Back then I did not own my own GPS. So I borrowed one from my little sister. And when I drove about five hours into my six hour drive, it didn't take me five hours because I went on the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. So it was packed on the roads. I sat in hours and hours of traffic, but I don't know how long I was sitting in traffic by the time I got to this exit because this GPS back then didn't recalculate for real time traffic. So I pull off at this exit and I'm assuming since I'm so far into my drive that the hotel that I'm staying at is gonna be right there a couple miles ahead. Well, the GPS freezes and it froze so bad I couldn't even restart it to shut it off and then have it kind of restart itself and turn it back on again, it literally was just frozen. And I had to wait for the battery to die so I could shut it off, charge it, and then restart it again. So I pull off into this gas station. It's about maybe five miles off of the highway. And thank God I had printed directions too, just because I'm old. <laughs> and I didn't know if I was gonna be able to borrow the GPS for my sister. So there's just kind of a really quick tip for you guys. I was on the road, I was hangry, I was pissed off. I honestly thought that I was going to be there quicker than I was, so I didn't eat. I was really scared because it was this windy, hilly, mountainy truck, what is it called, truck travel road, truck road? I don't know. Just have backup, know where you're going. The tip is also research the area where you're going to. Research the hotels. We have things now like Google Maps and Yelp and Google Reviews where you can just plug in the area, the city where you're going to and read reviews. See where it's good to stay. See how far it is off of the exit. Have your loved one if you need to. Ask them where their family stays so you know the good places to stay. Or you can ask on any of the Strong Prison Wives and Family social media. We are at Strong Prison Wives everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, you name it. Or even on this channel in the comments and I'll find you somebody who goes to that same facility. You also want to find out the hotels that you want to avoid. The areas of town that you want to avoid. The second one, I was on the road again. I actually had stopped at that exact same gas station right off the highway, maybe five miles, five hours into my drive. And I noticed a car had pulled into the gas station behind me, but I really didn't think twice about it because there was a car pulling into the gas station behind me, who cares? But then when I looked, I noticed that the car had parked on my right side. I looked out my passenger side window and it's a man who was probably in his early to mid seventies. And I could tell I did something that really pissed him off. He was screaming at me, he was yelling at me, he was telling me to get out of the car. Of course I did not get out of the car, but I rolled down my window enough to ask him what was going on. And he was like, are you kidding me? Both of your taillights are out. I almost hit you however many times. How dare you travel with your taillights out? Blah, 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 blah. He's screaming at me. He probably almost hit me and got scared, but I didn't know. So 
I guess he realized by the face I made and my reaction, I was scared, I was taken back. I was like, oh my God, I had no idea. It's not like I watch my brake lights. How do I see my brake lights while I'm driving my car? So I said to him, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I had no idea. I'm not from around here. I live five hours away. Can you tell me someplace I can go to get my taillights fixed? And thank God in that moment, he kind of calmed down and he could tell he scared me. So he started to help me and he said, oh, a couple miles down the road is this body shop, blah, blah, blah. They should help you. You need to get that fixed. You can't be on the road like that. And I said, thank you. And I went in and I got my gas and I left. I went past that body shop. It wasn't open because I guess where I go, they have blue laws and it was a holiday weekend. But I went to visit and I told Adam about what happened and he was like, well, he shouldn't have treated you like that, but that's really dangerous. You gotta get your tail legs fixed and hopefully you could do it before you leave town. And I'm like, yeah, how? So I go back, just so happens, I drive back to the hotel. I park the car, I get out and I'm going to the back to get something out of the trunk and I look up and across the street is an auto zone. I walked right over, I told the guy what was happening. He was so kind, he treated me so nicely. He walked out to the car, he saw the kind of lights that I needed. He changed them for me. I tipped him really well and it was great. But the lesson, the tip to pass along to you guys about that is just have your car serviced and checked before you're making all these trips back and forth. There's gonna be a lot more wear and tear on your car if you're making trips back and forth very frequently to prison visit. So get your tires checked. For me, a huge thing was, well, first of all, my oil changes needed to happen like every two or three visits I was going that far. But also because I was going up through the mountains and then the altitude would change so much, the tire pressure on my car would have to be my tires would have to be filled every once in a while. One time I had a slow leak and I didn't even know it. Learn these things. I would go to the gas station. I would ask an attendant to help me and tell me how much air pressure my tire needed. And then I learned it and I could do it by myself. So get your tires checked, get your car serviced, make sure your windshield wipers are working and they're not leaving any kind of film because that's really hard to see. This is like, do as I say, not as I do. Because the only time I remember when I need windshields which is windshield. No, when I need windshield wipers, which by the way is right now, is when it rains and I need them to be working. I should make a note right now on my phone to do that. Okay, the next experience that was really, really scary for me had to do with the weather. I checked the weather before I went out there because it snows like crazy where Adam is and usually I don't go over the winter, but I checked and it was President's Day weekend. I had that Monday off, so I had planned to drive out there to go to visit Saturday, Sunday, and then have Monday at home to catch up on sleep that I missed from visit. Just kind of have a day of the weekend to myself and a visit in the same weekend. It was a win-win for me. I checked the weather. It was supposed to snow very minimal on Saturday, but be perfectly fine on Sunday when I drove home. Perfect. While I was in visit that Sunday, it didn't even snow that Saturday, maybe a little bit of flurries, but not that big of a deal. While I was at visit, Adam went back to the bathroom. The cop that was accompanying him to the bathroom, for you guys that don't know, that don't have a loved one in prison, every time they go to the bathroom during visit, they have to be watched by a correctional officer because they need to make sure that there was nothing, no contraband exchanged during visit. So the cop tells him, hey, is your wife staying for the whole visit? And he said, yeah, I think so. We didn't talk about it, but she always does. He said, I just wanna let you know there's a really bad storm that's moving in. I will watch the radar and I'll let you guys know if she should leave early. He's like, okay, thanks. Back then the cops were really nice to us. So he came and sat down and he told me what was up and we kind of just like thumbs up to the cop and he walked over and he was like, it's not supposed to start until six o'clock. So if you leave at three, you'll be fine. You'll be ahead of it. I guess it moved even faster than they had anticipated it hitting. And I literally drove with the storm. Like, you know, when they say you have a black cloud over your head, I had a black cloud with an ice storm inside of it over my head. And it took me forever because the roads were slippery. Ice kept getting really thick on my windshield. So I would have to stop, pull over and scrape the ice off. So about, I think it took me about eight hours and I was still two hours away from home. It's supposed to be a six hour drive. So I pulled off and at this point it's dark. I'm cranky, I'm scared, I'm driving with anxiety. I don't like driving in the ice or the snow. I mean, who really does? But I pulled off into a Wendy's and I was gonna Google a place to stay. Just so happened, say another situation where I look up and there is an Econo Lodge. So I went and I got a room and the next day it was clear. It had warmed up, there was no ice on the road and I drove home. So the lesson to you guys, well, there's two lessons here. First of all, 
Watch the weather. There are so many girls through Strong Prison Wives that ignore the weather and they don't care. And I remember even one time when I was younger and my boss was a lot younger than me at the time. She was like 23 and we were very, very close and she was very supportive. She knew about Adam and she was supportive about it. And she said, are you going to see him this weekend? And I told her, no, I don't go in the winter. And she's like, Psh. If that was me, nothing would stop me from seeing Brian. When you're 23, that's how you think. Yeah, there are things that'll stop you from seeing Brian. For example, a horrible car accident. You being in the hospital. You not having a car. It's totaled. When you're young, you think you're invincible, but you're not. I've had to come on here, you guys, and tell you stories about people who were killed, a whole entire family and a friend, who were killed in an accident on their way to visit. That one wasn't weather related, but the point is I've had so many people who have said, well, I can't miss a weekend. I can't miss visit, I'm going. We had people who were going in states of emergency when there were hurricanes. They were leaving town, driving in a hurricane to prison visit. You guys, I'm gonna be big sister. I'm gonna smack down for a second. If you think that he's gonna shut down or worse, he's gonna flip out on you because you're missing one weekend of visit or worse, you think, because these are real stories out of people's mouths that I've coached, you think he's gonna find somebody else or another woman's gonna go to visit? <gasps> it's time for you to reevaluate your situation and figure out why you're so insecure, why you don't trust him, why you feel like you need to be there every single weekend and not put yourself and your health and safety first. You need to sit down and think about that. The second tip that I wanna tell you from that experience is, I know it's easier said than done, but if you could have a little bit of a cushion of money for emergencies, when I had to get those taillights, when I had to get a hotel room, thank God I had room on my credit card that I could do what I had to do in the moment of the emergency and pay it off slowly later. Again, easier said than done, I get it. We're strapped when we go to visit. But you have to save up for a visit anyway, usually, right? So maybe you can cut back on phone calls that month and save that money. Maybe you could cut back on sending him commissary that month. He can maybe not buy as many snacks just to make sure you have a little cushion. Leave a little bit of room on a credit card. Maybe you could just sign up for a credit card that just has a very small balance that you save just for emergencies for prison visit. Whatever it is, see what you can do. Maybe you could pick up a babysitting job or a dog walking job or something just to get yourself a little bit of a cushion in case of an emergency because unfortunately, you have to be prepared to be unprepared. There are gonna be times where unexpected expenses are gonna happen. The next story that happened to me was, it was a summer, I was at the hotel after visit, I wanted to get some fresh air, I wanted to get some sun, so I went down to the pool. And there was this adorable couple that was talking to me, I actually talked about them in the video that I did reviewing Lawman, Sean Hopwood's book. And they had this little bet going on before they even spoke to me. And whoever lost the bet based off of them asking me three questions would have to buy the other one dinner and give them a massage, something like that. And so the question was who I was voting for to be president, which it was back when Obama was running for president for the first time. If the book I was reading was fact or fiction and then there was something else I don't remember. But they were so cute and adorable and so friendly that I was confident in that moment. And after I finished talking to them, they I think they like left the pool or something. Then this man comes over and he starts striking up a conversation with me. So I'm talking to him and he asked me where I was from and then he asked me what I was doing out there. And since I was kind of already like on this high from talking to this other sweet, lovely couple, I told him, oh, my husband's at the prison down the road. Oh, stupidest mistake because then he starts lecturing me about how I shouldn't waste my life waiting for him. And then that turned into, what do you think happened next? I'll wait, him hitting on me. And then he started to get really weird. So I somehow dismissed this conversation. He goes in the pool, but then everything I did from there on out, he started following me and he got really creepy. And then I noticed that throughout the time I was there, the pool attendant kept coming in to change the towels. And I realized you don't need the towels changed that often at the pool. There weren't that many people there anyway. So I realized he was coming there to check on me. And then this last time he came in, the creepy guy was at the other end of the pool. So the hotel 
worker came behind me and he said, are you okay? Do you need help? And I said, actually, I'm leaving now anyway. I'll just walk out with you. Do you mind? And he said, no. So the tip there is if you feel uncomfortable, it's okay to ask for help. If you're in a store, if you're out, you can always ask somebody at the courtesy desk, at the front desk of the hotel, to walk you to your car, to walk you to your room. If I was alone and I was leaving the pool and I didn't feel safe that day, I also never would have taken a direct route to my room. I wouldn't have walked in a stairwell. I wouldn't have gotten on an elevator. What I probably would have done was gone to the lobby of the hotel where there was foot traffic, there were other people there, and I probably would have sat there for a little while or told the front desk, I don't feel comfortable. You can always ask for somebody to escort you to your room. You can also ask for your room to be moved. Something that I learned when taking a self-defense class is majority of women, when we finish shopping, when we're putting our groceries or our mall purchases in the trunk afterwards, we just get in the car and the first thing most of us do is pick up our phone and text somebody or check our messages that we had missed while we were shopping. Predators actually watch for that. So the first thing that they suggest for you to do is get in your car and immediately immediately lock the doors. Park in well-lit spots. Before you pick up your phone, move the car somewhere. Drive somewhere else. Drive to either a well-lit spot in the parking lot or just wait until you get home or until you stop to text. And the second tip I wanna give you from that experience at the pool with that man is don't trust people too quickly. Make sure that you have a cover story. You don't always wanna tell people that you're visiting your husband in jail, although some people wanna be loud and proud about it, especially cause like you're not at work and you're away from your hometown. So this is my opportunity to talk about it. It's also opening yourself up to be victimized because if you strike up a conversation and tell them what you're there for, you just told them that you're sleeping in your hotel room alone that night. As women, we were taught we need to be polite and ladylike, but politeness is never more important than your safety. And it is not rude to be cautious, nor is it a sin to bend the truth a little bit to make sure you and your children are remaining safe. Okay, the next story that happened to me that was scary was I was at a totally different hotel. This time it was a motel. I started staying at one of those motels where you don't have the inside hallway, the doors are open up into the outside. So your car is literally outside of the room that when you walk out of your room, you just walk into the parking lot basically or into the balcony. It was a four story hotel and I stayed there because it was like 50 or $60 cheaper than the rest of the hotel rooms in the area. Usually I stayed with a girlfriend, but she couldn't make it that weekend and I couldn't make it the weekend she could go, so I went by myself. I think I was working out around the pool area at the motel and there were guys that were up on the third floor. They were drinking, they had beer bottles in their hands and one of them yelled down to me, hey, where are you from? And I, not thinking, I said, I'm from New Jersey. And he said, oh, he said, we're going out tonight. Uh, drinking if you want to come. And I was like, oh, it's been a long drive. Thanks so much for the invite, but I'm okay. He said, well, what are you doing out here? Not thinking. I said, I'm here to visit my husband. And thank God he said back, oh, you're with your husband? Because the minute that I said I was, I was visiting my husband, I regretted what I had just said. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm with my husband. And it winds up that he said, oh, we're here working on the railroads because a lot of work crews stay at that hotel. And he said, we're going out drinking tonight because there's also a college town. So they were polite, they were nice, but we ended the conversation and I went to my room. And I showered because I just worked out and then I realized my car has New Jersey plates on it. I just told him, I was from New Jersey. So now he knows exactly what room I'm staying in. Thank God he thinks my husband is with me, but they're gonna come back drunk from the bars. They had been drinking all day and they didn't see any husband with me in and out of my room for the rest of the night. I don't know if they're watching me or not. So what I did was I waited for them to leave and I moved my car four or five parking spots away from my room. So now my car with my Jersey plates is not directly outside of the hotel room that I'm actually staying in. Could that have been major paranoia and anxiety? Sure. Am I alive to tell the story and not assaulted in any way? Yes. So there's the tip for you guys. Practice spatial awareness. Watch where you park your car. Park your car in a well-lit area. You can ask for your room to be moved if you don't feel comfortable where your room is. Also, I never ever walk around in that city like this on my phone. That's another thing we learned in self-defense class. Predators are watching for women who are not paying attention and they're on their phone because that makes you the easiest target of all.
You have no idea what is going on around you. Know your surroundings. Another thing is I love to work out when I'm at the hotel rooms because it gets my blood flowing. I'm not sitting all day. I'm not getting fresh air. All I'm doing all weekend is sitting six hours in the car driving, six hours the next day at visit, six hours the following day at visit, and then six hours driving home that afternoon. So I want to be able to move. Well, I will never work out with two earbuds in. I will put one earbud in, or you guys, one ear pod in. They make it really easy now with those. And then the other one, I don't have them. I have an Android but I will take the wire and I will loop it around so the earbud sits behind my ear because I want to make sure I can hear somebody sneaking up on me. I want to know what's going on around me. It's safe anyway. You could hear cars coming as well, but just be really careful with that. Know what's going on around you. You can also request to be put on the first floor if you feel more comfortable there. You can request to be put on a top floor wherever you feel the most comfortable. Don't be afraid to use your voice. Don't be afraid to ask to move rooms. If somebody watches you, go into your hotel room and that gives you the heebie-jeebies. It is okay to ask to move. You're not doing anything wrong. The last story I want to share didn't actually happen to me. It happened to somebody else. So this girl, when I was going in to visit one time, was telling me this story. She said, where are you staying? And I told her and she goes, oh my gosh, I'm staying at such and such seediest motel. Blech. I would never stay there. She said, I checked in and I went to my hotel room and maybe five minutes later, not even, the guy from the front desk, who was already kind of creepy, knocked on the door and he said, oh my gosh, you have such beautiful hair. I just wanted to make sure you brought shampoo. And she thought that was the strangest thing. So she said, yeah, I'm good. I got it. We're good. So he goes away. And then not more than five minutes later, knock, 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 knock. It was that guy again. And he comes back with some weird excuse like, hey, I just wanted to make sure you knew there's continental breakfast between six and 12 tomorrow. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. I'm good. So five minutes later, he's like, knock, 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 knock. And this time she doesn't even open the door. She just kind of opens the blinds. And he said, do you have dinner plans tonight? And she said, oh, she's like, I ate on the road. I'm okay, I'm not eating. At that point, she started to get weirded out. And the door on this awful motel room didn't have a deadbolt. So what she said she did was she took the chair from the desk and she kind of just wedged it underneath the doorknob to give her an extra layer of protection. So my advice to you guys is be careful. Research the hotels before you go, like I said earlier, but also make sure that you protect yourself. I one time had to go to Vegas very last minute. The only hotel room I could afford was a Motel 6 type of a room, which in Vegas, oh, it was so scary. My door did have a deadbolt, but what I did was I would take a piece of furniture. There was this Ottoman kind of desk type of piece of furniture that I would push in front of the door every night. But when I was getting ready to leave the room is when I would move it back. Ever since I spoke to this girl and she told me the story, I kind of got freaked out by staying in these hotel rooms by myself. So I just carry pepper spray with me and I keep it on the nightstand next to my phone. So the tip here is to know what's legal in your state and also in the state where you go to and protect yourself. Prison facilities are not always built in the safest areas. So they're usually built in cities where the local economy needs the money, they need the jobs. So there was a point where I was going to a town that was very racist. I would stay with one girl, I would stay with two girls sometimes, one was Muslim and she was afraid sometimes to go out in the area because you never know what you're subjecting yourself to. What we would do is either she would stay in the hotel room and my friend and I would go out and get food and bring it back or we would just use the buddy system and we would never allow her to go out by herself because she was putting herself in a situation where unfortunately it's awful that I even have to have this conversation in 2020. It's so sad, so disgusting, but just be careful and know the town that you're staying in and don't do anything that's gonna put you in a situation where you could be victimized. I just have a couple more quick safety tips that I don't have accompanying stories for, but I figured while we're making this video, I might as well share them. This one is really, really important, you guys. For some reason, all of us, including myself, feel like we owe it to everybody to post things on social media in real time. It's fun to post stories and live videos and all this stuff. And I used to be really good about this when I first started Strong Prison Wives and Families and I was traveling to visit so often. I would never post a video when I was away until after the fact. And I would never tell anybody I was going to visit until after the fact. And I mean anybody online. I would 
wait until afterwards. And I learned this also through an episode of the Kardashians where they don't post Instagram stories in real time ever. They save the pictures to their camera roll and then they post them when they're not in the location where they were when they took the pictures just to protect yourself. Because what you're doing is one, saying this is where I am and two, saying my house is empty right now for the amount of time that I'm gonna be gone. The other thing is just mind your booze, especially if you're alone. There have been plenty of times where I had a couple of drinks to unwind while I was with my friend. We we're having a girls weekend. We wanted to try the fun, fancy fall drink menu, but we would never get wasted or if one of us drank too much, the other one would make sure she was okay to drive. And honestly, I never drink that much at visit because I don't wanna be hungover. I'm old and your girl gets hangovers like you could not imagine. So I'm not trying to be hungover and going through visit process. And I'm not trying to not be energetic and my best self the once a month that I get to spend with my husband. But just know that your inhibitions go way down. And there's a lot of times you make decisions that you would not have made sober when you're drunk. Also, you can't get in a car and drive if you need to get away or something like that. Just make sure that you mind your booze. I'm not saying don't drink when you're away and you need to relax and have fun. Just be careful. And unless I was in my hotel room with the door locked, I wouldn't even think twice about getting shit-faced. The last one is so important and it's one that we ignore so much and it's genuinely the easiest to do, but it's the most ignored. And that's just use common sense. Your natural instincts are trying to tell you something. If you get a weird, funny feeling from somebody that's talking to you at the hotel restaurant, listen to that. You don't have to be rude, but you could very easily excuse yourself from those conversations. Genuinely, you guys, it is never ever a good idea to ignore your gut. What's the worst thing that could happen? Maybe you're paranoid, you lived to tell the story. My mother always used to say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Meaning, just be cautious, take precautions, and you won't have to worry about scrambling and getting yourself out of an awful situation that could potentially happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you had weird experiences traveling or have you heard stories, crazy things that happen to people when they go to visit or when they travel alone or any other tips that you've learned while you are traveling that you wanna share because we are all one big sisterhood and brotherhood, I'm sorry boys. This video I refer to the girls a lot but you guys will never ever understand what it's like to be walking down the street and have to make a split second decision if you should cross because the man approaching you is making you feel uncomfortable. So you share this with the women in your life as well. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you and God knows I am too. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. Fourth time I filmed this video.